Hi beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I'm here to wrap up all of the remaining books that I've read in the month of October. I did already post a mid-month wrap-up where I talked about the first, I believe it was five books that I read in the month of October. So this video will not feature those books. I will try to remember to link it up in the cards for you if you are interested so that you can go check that out. This video will only feature the books that I've read in the second half of the month of October. I have five books to share. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the first book that I have to share with you today is An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. This was a book that was gifted to me as part of the monthly Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of. So this is your typical locked room winter isolation thriller. It follows a handful of people who are all headed to this remote mountain lodge in the Catskills. It's a very rustic type of lodge. It doesn't even have some modern amenities like Wi-Fi. All of these people are going there for their own different reasons. Some are going with their partner, some are going with their friends, some are going on their own. And of course once they get to this lodge a huge snowstorm comes through, kind of knocks out the power, and leaves everybody trapped. But what's worse is over their very first night in this lodge one of the guests winds up dead. And so naturally they all kind of become suspicious of each other they're trying to figure out what might have happened to this guest, who might have killed her, are they stuck in this lodge with a killer? And of course more people wind up dead over the course of the story as well. So I knew from the very first page or two of this story that it wasn't going to be like an absolute all-time favorite and that is just because within the first couple of pages you are introduced to basically all of the characters that you're going to follow through the course of this book. So there's a lot of people to keep track of, you have to keep track of why they're there, who they're with, what their names are, what their backgrounds are, etc. And you know that you're not going to get an extended period of time with each character and as a character driven reader that often keeps me disconnected from a book. So I knew that this wasn't necessarily going to be anything of substance. However, what this was was a whole lot of fun. I devoured this book. I got through it very very quickly because I just wanted to keep reading. I wanted to figure out what happened. I wanted to figure out who was at fault. Now I've said this many times before but one of the drawbacks to having a locked room mystery like this where you have a set cast of characters and there's only a handful of them is that one of them has to be guilty of this and so you can't ever truly be shocked when you find out who did it. But I think the shock factor or at least the most interesting and entertaining part of these books is the why behind the crimes. So I actually thought that was pretty well done in here. I liked where Sherry Lapina directed the story and there was also one kind of little side twist at the end that I thought was kind of fun as well. So is this a new favorite mystery thriller? Not necessarily but it is something I would recommend to somebody who might be in the mood for a wintry isolationist thriller. Somebody who might like One by One by Ruth Ware. This has a lot of similar vibes to that book. I would absolutely recommend it. And I would also recommend if you're looking for maybe a little bit of a lighter mystery thriller type of story because that definitely was this. It wasn't very spooky or creepy or dark or anything like that. It had somewhat Agatha Christie and then there were none vibes. So any of that sounds appealing to you. I would definitely recommend checking this out because like I said I got through it really quickly. I just wanted to keep reading. It was really easy to follow once you got to know all of the characters and I feel like Sherry Lapina did a great job of distinguishing all of the characters and their motive and the reasons they were there etc. So overall I really enjoyed this. I gave this a 3.5 stars and this is actually a book that has inspired me to read more of Sherry Lapina. She was kind of on the chopping block for me. I had read two of her books previously, really liked one, didn't like the other and so this was kind of a tiebreaker and even though this isn't a new favorite or anything I would be willing to read more from her in the future. So I would recommend this book. After I finished An Unwanted Guest I was still waiting on a library hold to come in so I could actually finish off my official October TBR and I needed something to pick up. So I went ahead and picked up Every Last Secret by A.R. Tori and this is what I would call a popcorn thriller because it was just delicious throughout the entirety of this book. This again is not really like a substantial type suspense thriller but it is something that's going to keep you turning the pages. It's a great palate cleanser. It's a whole lot of fun. I would classify this as rich people behaving badly. Primarily following two women, Kat Winthrop and Nina Ryder. Kat Winthrop and her husband William live in this very affluent community in the Bay Area of California. Kat is kind of the envy of everybody because she's married to William who is extremely handsome and successful. Kat herself also has a lot going for her and so they just live this very privileged life in California. And then enter Nina Ryder. She is a PhD who has recently been hired by William to perform specific job duties at his company. And Kat instantly takes a disliking to Nina. She doesn't like Nina. She feels threatened by Nina. And that's really what kind of sets the game in motion. You are following both perspectives. You are following Kat and you are following Nina. And as you are following Nina you do find out that she has ulterior motives. So Nina had a really hard life, a really hard childhood. Her mother kind of abandoned her to her abusive alcohol father and so she was desperate to get out of his grasp so she married her high school sweetheart as soon as they graduated and she has been married to him ever since. They seem to have a very loving relationship. Her husband adores her immensely but Nina has always wanted more. She wants to live
live the life that Kat Winthrop lives. So as soon as she gets this job under William Winthrop, they move into that same affluent neighborhood and Nina is going to do whatever it takes to get a step up, to live that privileged life that she so desperately wants. And so this is really about the game between these two. They know that they're not friends. They're like frenemies, I guess would be the correct term. They know that they really don't like each other. They know that they're just keeping things polite and civil for appearances sake. But this really is about the back and forth between these two and the things that they do to one another to try to one up each other and win the game. And like I said, I thought that this was just delicious. It was compulsively readable. You want to keep turning the pages. You want to figure out who is going to win, exactly how far they're willing to go and how it is going to end up. So I overall really enjoyed my reading experience of this book. I will absolutely be reading more from A.R. Tori in the future. I also really liked the writing style of this as well. Like I said, it just kept you reading and engaged throughout the entirety of the story. This is another one that I recommend if you are looking for a more lighter thriller story that's not going to be in too intense, too heavy, or too dark. And I gave this one four stars. Next, I have Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. And this was just such a charming, delightful, intelligent read. This is primarily set in the 1950s. So it probably is technically historical fiction, but just the way that it is written, it definitely reads a little bit more like a contemporary. At least I felt that way. So again, this is set in the 1950s and it follows our main character, Elizabeth Sott. And Elizabeth Sott is a chemist. She is a scientist and she is a scientist in a time when being a professional and basically any industry is not kind to women. Unless you were like a secretary or a teacher, you are expected to be at home raising your children. But that's not what Elizabeth wants at all. Elizabeth wants to be a chemist. She wants to be a scientist in a lab. She wants to make big discoveries and change the world. She not only rejects societal norms, but she actively questions them. And naturally she is constantly being surrounded by these sexist men who have a less than scientific view of equality. We're following her and her experiences as she's working in this one particular lab and how she is treated by the men in this lab until she meets Calvin Evans, who is a gifted, well-known, but often difficult scientist. But he values Elizabeth for her mind and her contributions. And he doesn't see her as less because she is a woman. And so she and Calvin form up this really strong friendship and then this really bonded romantic relationship. Unfortunately, life throws a curveball her way and she suddenly finds herself single and pregnant and fired from her job. And she has to figure out how to exist now that she's going to be a mother, something she never wanted, without a partner to help her and without a job. Until she kind of stumbles into this position of hosting an afternoon television show focusing on cooking. And she uses her background in chemistry to provide this unique and scientific approach to cooking because after all, cooking is chemistry. And this is definitely not where Elizabeth sees herself. This is still not what she wants to do. She still wants to be a scientist in a lab. But she realizes that she can use her cooking show to empower women to be more more than anybody is telling them that they can be at this time. And so naturally she's very much ruffling tail feathers. There's a lot of people who do not like what she is doing because she is challenging the status quo. So this book is very much a character driven story focused on Elizabeth. There is very, very little plot. That's not what's important about this book. What's really important are the messages that are portrayed in here. And that is the reason I gave this book a 4.5 stars. I didn't necessarily have the emotional attachment to this book that I normally would need for a 4.5 stars, but because of the quotability of this book, because of the messages in this book, because of the absolutely fantastic characters in this book, I didn't really feel like I could give it anything less than a 4.5 because it is highly, highly deserved. I am not usually one that keeps track of quotes in a book, but some of these things were just so spot on and articulate and poignant that I had to go ahead and write them down. And I did include them in my Goodreads review if you were interested in seeing some of my favorite ones throughout the book. My Goodreads is linked down below. This book is definitely absolutely infuriating at times and not because of the plot, but just because of how Elizabeth is treated simply because she is a woman. This book does really make you think about why we as a society are so quick to adhere to societal norms and the status quo when really it's all just going to change in a decade, two decades, three decades, four decades. And we're just going to spend so much time in the present day apologizing for the societal norms and status quo of the past. That seems to be a repeating trend in history, but yet we continue as a society to follow these norms that are created by flawed and misguided people. It makes you wonder how men, like primarily white European men, had so much arrogance and misplaced confidence that they believe that they were somehow superior to all other human beings and that they have a right to judge and control all other sexes and races and religions. It's just mind boggling. It really is. And this also makes you question why humanity in general has this unjustified sense of superiority where we also now believe that we are the superior species above all other species. 
species and how this really propagates some of the horrendous abuses that we perpetuate on the animal kingdom because we have this idea that animals are here for our exploitation. So again, while the plot of this is not necessarily extremely unique or mind-blowing, and this is definitely a character-driven story, what I feel is really overall important about this book is the messages, the way that it gets you to think, and of course the overall characters itself because they are fantastic. Elizabeth Zaw is fantastic. Her daughter is exceptional. She even has an exceptional dog. This is just filled with this wonderful, lovable, quirky cast of characters, aside from, of course, the characters you're really not supposed to like, the ones that are supposed to infuriate you. So I highly recommend if you have not already picked this up and this sounds interesting because it is definitely a thoughtful read. It is a heartwarming, touching read, and I'm looking forward to more from Bonnie Garmus. I know that she is writing another novel at this time, and this is actually being adapted, and so I'm definitely interested in seeing this adaptation. And so if you are interested in reading this before the adaptation, highly recommend that you do so. Next, I decided to continue on the path of the isolationist thrillers, and I decided to read A Solitude of Wolverines by Alice Henderson. This follows our main character, Dr. Alex Carter. She is a wildlife biologist who, for the past several years, has been living in Boston. She moved out there to be with her boyfriend, but that relationship is failing, and she's no longer happy in Boston. She misses being outdoors, out in the field, studying wildlife, which is what she really wants to do. So when she's given the opportunity to go to the northern Montana mountains to study wolverines, she basically jumps at the opportunity. She is going to be staying in this like abandoned ski resort lodge that the property it's housed on is now this nature preserve and she's going to stay out there through the winter to study the wolverines. But when she gets out there she realizes that she's not really welcomed by the locals who wanted to use that land for other things and so she's getting threats. She was almost run off the road. She's getting evil eyes and she goes into town and not only that but she's noticing weird things happening on the nature preserve itself but still she's sticking it out. She wants to be there. She wants to study the wolverine. She's not going anywhere. But then one night it all comes to a head and something comes looking for her and she has no choice but to fight for her survival. I enjoyed this one immensely. In fact, I can probably say that it is now right up there with No Exit by Taylor Adams as one of my favorite wintry, chilly, isolationist thrillers. It definitely has the atmosphere that you're looking for in the stories. It definitely has the thrill factor, especially towards the end. Like the last couple of hours of the audiobook for this, I was on the edge of my seat. I was like holding on for dear life because I just had to know what happened. Stakes got really high. It was super intense. You didn't know who you could trust. And, and then poor Alex is out there on her own on this nature preserve with nobody to help her. Not only did I enjoy the overall plot, but I liked the educational and informational aspects of the story as well. So obviously you're going to learn a lot about the wolverines that she's observing, but you're also going to learn a lot more about wildlife conservancy in general. You're going to learn a lot about the threats to these animals that are primarily anthropogenic or human cause. All of that is tossed in here, but it's not done so unnaturally or in a preachy fashion. Not at all. It really ties in well with the story because she is a wildlife biologist. This is what she's there and meant to do. Adding these tidbits to the story really just helps you understand Alex as a character and why she's doing what she's doing and then you as a reader get a little bit more out of it as well because you are learning all these things that you might not otherwise know. I would say my only criticism about the book is really that Alex seemed to have a lot of skills that maybe a normal wildlife biologist wouldn't have and those skills naturally help her as she's trying to fight for survival. For example, she knows how to shoot all manner of guns. She also knows how to work on cars. She fixes her cars herself. She knows martial arts and her mother was unusual and would put her through these like survivalist training scenarios when she was a kid. So all of these things come into play when she's actually out there fighting for her life. Well, obviously you're rooting for Alex and you want her to get through this. I was interested in knowing what a person who did not necessarily have these skills would do. So I think that would be my only criticism. I will absolutely be continuing in this series. I believe that there's at least one more book that's coming out. I don't know if it's a trilogy or if it's going to continue, but this is one that I'm excited to continue. I really enjoyed the story overall. I enjoyed the atmosphere. I enjoyed the intensity. I enjoyed that I was so invested in the outcome that I was literally on the edge of my seat wanting to figure out what happened. So this is definitely one that I'm recommending if you are more interested in maybe like a darker, more high stakes type of isolation thriller. This is definitely it. All right. And then the final book that I finished in the month of October was Shiver by Allie Reynolds. Again, another wintry isolationist thriller. So this follows a group of friends who are meeting at this ski resort preseason as sort of a reunion. They haven't seen each other in 10 years since something tragic happened to one of their group. And so they think that they're reuniting to just 
rehash good times and remember the ones that they've lost. But once they get there, they soon realize that something is off. There are no staff there at all. Even though it's the preseason, you would expect some staff to be there to help maintain the ground and help them with anything that they need since they are going to be staying there for a couple of days. But there are no staff and they soon realize that there is somebody messing with them because their phones are gone and somebody has alluded to the fact that they know the secrets of this group. And so they don't know who to trust. They don't know if it's one of them who has done this. They don't know if it's somebody unknown to them. They don't know if it's possibly the person they thought they lost 10 years ago who might be back to enact revenge. So this definitely had a lot of similar vibes to An Unwanted Guest and One by One by Ruth Ware. I would say it's kind of a mixture of those stories also with kind of that dark academia trope where you have this group of people who are best friends in college and then something traumatic happens during college and then they go years without seeing or speaking to each other until they all come back for the college reunion. That's what this kind of reminded me of. Only now you have this group who met during this snowboarding competition were really tight for several weeks while they were training and doing all of this stuff and then something traumatic happens they don't see or talk to each other for 10 years and now they're coming back to deal with it so i found that this to be an interesting combination of the tropes you would typically see in like in and then there were none situation with some of those tropes that you might see in like a dark academia situation. And I overall very much enjoyed the story. I like the way that Allie Reynolds went with it and took the direction of the story. Again, it has all of the vibes that you were looking for. It has a bunch of flawed people who are coming together, who are mistrustful of each other, who don't know what's going on. They are all hiding secrets. They all think that they have something to do with what happened in the past. You yourself as the reader don't know who to trust. You're suspicious of absolutely everybody. Nobody can be trusted. And it's all about uncovering what happened in the past and what's happening now because you do get the perspective of 10 years in the past when all of this is going down and then you have the present perspective. So again, this was another fun time, really something that you can eat up and you just want to keep turning the pages. I also felt like the characters were pretty decently fleshed out. They all had their own unique personalities. You were able to tell them apart. And so overall, it was just a really good time. This is another one that I definitely recommend. And I also gave this one four stars. All right, everybody, those are all the books that I read in the second half of October. Please let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about today and what your thoughts were. Please also let me know Know what you have been reading and loving in October. I would love to know. You guys know that I love chatting with you down in the comments. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.